Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to talk to you about a research paper that came out that I believe has credible clues to what Rocket Lab's um, const constellation or space infrastructure is going to be. Uh, it's all speculation, but I, you're going to understand by the end of the video that I think that whoever made this put very serious thought into it. And I think it's very, very credible. So it gives a very good insight into where Rocket Lab is going. As we know, the launch business is this small, the space systems is this small, and the space infrastructure's potential is it doesn't fit into the screen. So it's very important to know where they're going. Uh, in any case, if you like this video, please make sure you do all the YouTube stuff, you know, subscribe, like, and everything. And uh, if you wanna support the channel and become a channel member, there's a link in the description box below and you can check it out. Uh, cool. So what I'm going to uh, talk to you about is a report uh, that Payload has uh, received. I'm going to put this, uh, sorry, released. I'm going to put their link in the description box of this video. And uh, in this report, it's funny, it was like sponsored by Rocket Lab, which I'm not sure why Rocket Lab would sponsor this. Um, and it's, it's a good read uh, if you're very versed or, you know, if you um, follow this channel a lot and you know a lot about Rocket Lab, it's not going to be a lot of new uh, data for you. But uh, on this uh, page, which is page 25, it looks like, they start to go into a very interesting speculation that I want to go over with you. Uh, so data applications and satellite feed, note this is payload commentary, Rocket Lab did not provide input. Input. The answer is still being decided, but the easier route would be buy. So that's how Rocket Lab would get into the space infrastructure. And I never thought of this, by the way. So um, when I first read this, I was like, what? And then I read it and it actually makes sense. So Rocket Lab is well positioned to access capital with plenty of space companies facing dwindling cash reserves and struggling to raise uh, the next round or access public market dollars. Rocket Lab could find a pretty sweet deal in the M&A markets. Um, I think this was done before Trump's inauguration and um, maybe even written before the, the crazy space rally because I feel like anything that has space in it is uh, skyrocketing, but uh, okay. Uh, buying also makes sense operationally. The company's unique launch and build capabilities would result in significant synergies for a tuck-in acquisition. Uh, buying versus building also hedges the risk of setting up the infrastructure needed to develop and ramp up a novel constellation from scratch. So for example, if they would buy a company that has a few satellites already up, they have a few customers, so you know the, the concept is half proven, and they need to launch 50 satellites more than the company is really happy that Rocket Lab approached them uh, because Neutron, like having Neutron really brings um, cost down for, for the company. And Rocket Lab is really happy with this because they're taking a lot less risk and they're buying something that is ready, that already has customers and that is sort of proven. Acquiring an established company would give Rocket Lab a good sense of market demand, mitigating the risk of building a product that uh, customers don't need. The strategy could also allow the company to access valuable spectrum. So that's the other thing that you need to have certain licenses to have uh, certain uh, radio frequency uh, spectrums. And uh, it takes time, you know, I, I think it, whatever, it's a complicated procedure to get it. And obviously, if you buy a company that has it, you just waved your magic dollar wand and um, problem solved. Uh, however, if valuations are too rich, Rocket Lab may elect to leverage its pay systems divisions and satellite platform to build its constellation from scratch. What data application segment could Rocket Lab uh, look to break into? There are only two options, Earth Observation and SATCOM. Uh, we believe the company will likely target SATCOM a SATCOM tuck-in acquisition. So tuck-in acquisition basically uh, means that they fully integrate a new company into the existing systems uh, of Rocket Lab. So I don't know if McDonald's would buy a ice cream machine uh, because their ice cream machine sucks. That would be like a tuck-in acquisition where you know the ice cream machine company disappears and everybody just thinks of it as McDonald's and it just makes McDonald's operation 
simple. Uh, the company is likely shooting for a constellation that requires a couple of hundred Leo birds with multi-thousand satellite mega constellations uh, likely outside the company strike zone. Let's discuss. Uh, so Earth observation. Most Im Im imaging companies with the exception of Planet Labs maintain constellations with fewer than 50 satellites that need to be replenished every few years. Advantages. Rocket Lab does not currently have a satellite bus optimized for Earth observation services. I, by the way, don't think that this is an advantage if they want to go into the Earth observation market. Expanding into this segment would help add data application service and uh, Earth observation spacecraft bus. Both electron and neutron are good fit for launching Earth observation satellites. Uh, the Earth observation market has a clear demand and offers easier path to revenue generation. Uh, the disadvantages. So here I wasn't, I don't know, like some of the advantages, like I'm not sure that it's an advantage. And disadvantages. EO constellations generally don't demand a large number of satellites, limiting launching synergies with neutron. So many times Peter Beck and Adam Spice have said that neutron is going to make the space infrastructure possible for uh, Rocket Lab. And that statement is not true if they go into the Earth observation because, you know, they can just shoot up 10 satellites with you know 10 reused electrons and there you go you have you you actually don't need neutron uh, rocket lab will be competing with its own electron uh, customer uh, base also true uh, the earth observation companies such as plant labs has struggled to turn profit also true like i think it's a very limited market a lot of competition and so forth and so forth. The market size is limited compared to SETCOM. Would Rocket Lab care for a market that doesn't offer a massive market opportunity? Nope, because as we learned in the last video, Peter Beck has two minds, the business mind and the engineer mind, and the business mind always wins. Uh, launch capabilities only make sense for companies with high frequency launch needs, such as those in LEO with intensive coverage requirements. Exactly. So uh, Rocket Lab's value add to this uh, consortium or whatever these two companies uh, merge into is, is it disappears if it's earth observation because you don't really need so much launch um, so given the market dynamics we don't believe rocket lab will target an earth observation company data app, uh, okay satcoms can be broken down into two groups broadband and ancillary connectivity uh, satellite communications, broadband. Broadband satellite communications like OneWeb, Starlink, and Amazon Kuiper offer fiber -like connectivity worldwide, such as constellations. Such constellations have significant upfront capital needs uh, as a complete system requires hundreds of satellites before service can uh, commence. So exactly why I don't think that they're going into this. So you, on one side, uh, you, it's a very tough competing market. I mean, I would not want to compete one with Starlink. And then on top of it, if that's not enough, you're going to compete with Amazon uh, Kuiper. And then there is OneWeb and Rocket Lab would need to put out an insane amount of capital probably that they don't have just to even be able to begin uh, operations because um, on the broadband, like having uh, 50 satellites around the planet, it doesn't make it usable you need to have a lot of satellites uh yeah just to begin the service so advantages of this neutron can significantly reduce launch costs in a similar manner a manner as spacex's falcon 9 for starlink rocket lab already has the lightning satellite platform that can meet the needs of communication satellites the broadband market ranks as one of the world's largest uh, markets and will grow as the world increasingly moves online so these are very good advantages but there is gimmies and gotchas, and here's the gotchas. There is intensive competition from industry giants, such as SpaceX, Amazon, OneWeb, Teleset, uh, which are either government-backed or have immense resources available. Uh, a new system would be years behind competitors and have low spectrum priority compared to incumbent networks. So those are pretty hard to um, overcome. Speculation on potential acquisition. Note this is pure speculation. Should be viewed as a purely a thought exercise. No viable potential acquisitions were identified at current market valuations and Rocket Lab cash on hand. So obviously, uh, you know, acquiring Starlink is, you know, in the hundreds of billions. Um, I think even today, Kuiper, because 
Amazon is backing it and yeah, it's probably worth a few billion. And I mean, it's anyways not for sale. There's like zero chance that Amazon uh, would be selling it. So there is no credible way to get into this market or to buy yourself into this market. So we can actually forget about it. Satellite communications and ciliary connectivity. And ciliary means like secondary and, uh, you know, uh, su supportive connectivity in space, direct to device, IoT and secure comms. While mega cap companies dominate the satellite communications broadband market, other targeted satellite communication services like Relay, and by the way, Relay um, is, uh, I, ha I had to look these up, what, what these were. Uh, so Relay is, I actually have it here from ChatGPT, it's easier maybe like this. So Relay services involve satellite transmitting data between two or more locations on Earth. Uh, these services are commonly used for broadcasting, transferring signals over long distances or relaying data between remote locations and central hubs. So I guess this would be useful, let's say, when you do um, a credit card transaction and you're guessing at the pump and, you know, then the pump needs to communicate with, I don't know, the Citibank server in New York and that it beam, it get beams up, it's get can't speak it's too late so it gets beamed up to the satellite and then down to the bank and then back up so that that would be like a relay communication uh satellite um the d to d is a direct to device uh refers to satellite communication services that allow signals to be sent directly to individual devices such as smartphones or IoT devices without the need for intermediary ground-based infrastructure. This technology is particularly useful in areas with limited or no terrestrial uh, connectivity. Uh, then you have the Internet of Things, um, which is, is a satellite Internet of Things services enable communications data exchange for connected devices in remote or hard to reach areas. This can include applications in agriculture, logistics, energy, environmental m monitoring, where additional cellular networks may not be available uh, and secure comms. So this is the one that I believe in the most. And that is, let's say, a military or a government or a bank uh, wants to set up communications that is unhackable. Then you can you know, create your own constellations. Uh, it's very few satellites. Um, and then you have your own unbreakable, very reliable communication system. So advantages, the Lightning Platform can be leveraged for different satellite communication services. Uh, the early stage and mid-stage ventures in the field have valuations within the reach of Rocket Lab. So that's a huge advantage that Rocket Lab is able to buy themselves into this. Similar to broadband deployment, the Constellation can benefit from the lower launch cost offered by Neutron. Very big benefit. The non-broadband SATCOM market still offers a large addressable market. Remember Peter's business mind. Uh, many companies with Spectrum Rise need more in-house vertically integrated launch services to fully monetize them. So Rocket Lab would be a huge value on uh, for these companies because one, they can produce the satellites and they can launch them. Um, Yes, disadvantages. Even peripheral SATCOM plays could be within Starlink striking distance. For example, Starlink is growing its space relay and direct to sell capabilities. So yes, uh, if they choose wrongly, then Elon Musk uh, can add a new antenna to all the Starlink satellites and then you're out of business. Uh, direct to mobile communication presents a complex regulatory landscape posing substantial execution risk. Um, so brainstorming on potential acquisition, note that this is pure speculation from payload team and should be viewed as a thought exercise. Rocket Lab did not provide input into this. So here are some companies that would fit Rocket Lab's budget and um, they, they check all the boxes. So Kepler Communications, in space optical relay network. Kepler is the only company building dedicated space relay network to connect LEO satellites to the ground via RF and optical uh, inter-satellite rings. Um, the prolification of LEO and the plan for multiple space stations, this market segment has had uh, high demand. Kepler has access to KU uh, band spectrum and has raised 170 million, uh, positioning it as a potential target for Rocket Lab. In addition, it has proven 
uh, optical link capability and the two companies share a connection with the SDA program. Spire Global IoT and Data Analytics Services. Spire Global is one of the few IoT and data analytics companies with yearly revenue of over 100 million and an operation constellation uh, of satellite and an operation constellation. I think he meant to say operational constellation of satellites. Its market cap is approximately 250 million. Uh, it makes a suit. It makes it suitable for Rocket Lab acquisition. However, their spacecraft cube sets. Uh, which does not fit with Rocket Lab's uh, space business. Global Star, this one has me really excited. So Global Star is the only direct to sell provider excluding uh, SpaceX and in Marsat uh, that has significant revenue. Global Star's market valuation of 3.8 billion, putting it on the expensive end of Rocket Lab's range. So now if Rocket Lab were to buy them, it would probably be a part cash, part uh, stock deal. Uh, and that would be sort of a dilution uh, to us. Uh, but so wh when you see this number, don't get a heart attack and Rocket Lab doesn't necessarily need to take a humongous loan out for this. They can also just uh, give Rocket Lab shares for this company's shares. Rocket Lab is using the Lightning Satellite, uh, sorry, Global Star is using the Lightning Satellite platform for its next generation system, which could make it an appealing acquisition in the future. Global Star has access to valuable L-band and S-band spectrums. Global Star's strong partnership with Apple could guarantee immediate revenue. I mean, guys, if they would get Global Star, they would get Apple as a freaking customer. And oh my God, that would be a very, very big thing. I'm actually very excited about that one. And I really think that it's in the realm of uh, possibilities. Utelsat, uh, Leo and Geocoms. Uh, Utelsat is one web sparing company and Geo Satellite uh, Com Operator. Uh, Utelsat is currently focusing on the deployment of OneWeb's Gen 2 system and is a member of the European Space Rise Consortium, building the IRIS constellation for the European Commission. Rocket Lab could utilize the Lightning platform for OneWeb's Gen 2 and the IRIS constellation. OneWeb already has access to high priority KU and KA band spectrum. Rocket Lab positions itself as a major player in the EU space economy system by entering the IRIS program. Notably, the EU Telset has a market cap of 1 billion with 3.5 million of debt. I am not in love with this option. So obviously there might be even uh, more options to consider, but uh, I think whoever wrote this, um, this payload research, they really, really well thought this out. And I never looked at it, looked at this from this angle. And I truly believe that Rocket Lab is either going to buy themselves in uh, to start with space infrastructure. And my bet is on the secure comms. Uh, I was reading that uh, the US Army wants to have, uh, sorry, the US military wants to have by army, by military division, uh, their secure comm satellites. So maybe the army needs one, maybe the Navy needs one, maybe the Air Force uh, needs one and it would be relatively simple to deliver for Rocket Lab. So it, it can be that, uh, and I, I'm thinking, I think it's going to be that Rocket Lab is going to have multiple uh, constellations. Uh, I think and hope they're going to do an acquisition and I think that they're going to do secure comms uh, for different governments and maybe even uh, companies. Anyways, let me know in the comments what you thought about this and how much weight you give to this report. I'm very curious if you have a, a credible idea of uh, companies that could be based on this logic on uh, Rocket Lab's radar. Please put it in the comment section uh, below so I can do more research on it. Other than that, uh, again, make sure you do all the YouTube goodies, subscribe, and uh, if you wanna support the channel, there's a link in the description box below, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.